The new album is called The Bridge, and what an adventure this is from start to finish. Sting, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for saying that. Adventure, that's a nice word. It yeah, truly right. is. It truly is. I feel as though listening to this record from front to back uh, at a time where we've been more introspective than ever, it really allows us to hold that mirror up in front of our faces. Did it feel like that for you when you were putting this together? You know, it's, it's, it's always that way for me. You know, I, I, uh, I, I have to go into my subconscious, if you like, and uh, put out you know, a, an array of songs, and I'm, I'm never sure what they're going to be about. You know, it's, it's, it's a mystery to me. Uh, at the end of the day, you look at them and you look for connected tissue. You know, what, what are these songs connected by? And uh, it was clear uh, that they were all about characters in transition. Um, between worlds, between life and death, between health and sickness, between relationships, and uh, all looking for a bridge to the future, which of course led me to write the song The Bridge and then call the album that. You know, I think we're all in this situation, you know, the, the crises we're facing as a, as a society, the climate crisis, the, the political crisis, the pandemic itself, all of them makes it, make us anxious and we're all looking for some kind of bridge. We don't know what it is or where it is, but we're certainly all looking for it. My bridge, of course, is, is music, the one storytelling. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, here we all are. So, you know, I, I, I'm sharing this with the world because I'm part of it. There's always a sense of escapism with whatever it is that you do. And I, I just before I go any further, there is a member of my family that just wanted to say a very quick hello to you, because after watching only murders in the building, Ollie was very concerned that you didn't like dogs. <laughs> uh, you know, I was I was acting. I was acting. What I an incredible. What an incredible opportunity to be reunited with Steve Martin, who you were on SNL with. And of course, Martin Short. Um, when you think about those distractions for you over the course of the, the last year and a half, as you say, with so much that has gone on between music, between acting, uh, for you at this stage in your career, how do you keep moving day to day at such a rapid pace? Do you need no. those kind of distractions from time to time? I'm, I'm curious about, about just about everything. And when I'm offered an opportunity to be slightly to the left of center, you know, or, mm. uh, I always look upon it as an opportunity to discover something, you know. And I'm asked to play a version of myself with Steve Martin and Selena Gomez and, and Martin Short. I'm not going to say no to that, you know. I, I, <laughs> it, uh, it was it was great fun to do and, and lovely to play an exaggerated version of myself, even though I love dogs and I have so many. <laughs> Ollie was sleep better tonight. It's interesting you mentioned the art of collaboration because yours has always been one that has explored the dynamic and you always seem to get it right. On this record, um, you work again with Josh Freese, who I have loved his work, be it with Nine Inch Nails, with The Offspring, um, you know, with Maynard James Keenan in A Perfect Circle. You know, you explore collaborations with people. I'm curious if on, on some of this record, if... And, and in past works, if, if tracks don't kind of take on a different life of their own based on who you're working with. Of course they do, you know, and I, I, I work with the best musicians in the world and they're always going to bring something to the table that you didn't expect. Uh, always something more. Dominic Miller on guitar, and you say Josh Freeze on drums. The bass player's not bad either, but, you know, we all <laughs> get this stuff to the soup and, you know, we end up with this wonderful collaboration. I mean, to call an album a solo record, a solo effort, it has never made any sense to me. They're always collaborative, and I, I've benefited greatly from having the best people around me. The sum is always equal to, to the parts in place. Uh, there is a track on this record that jumps out at me. And, and again, I find this to be you at your best. You know, one of the best things I think that anybody could say about you, Sting, is you're eclectic. You know, we dive into a record and we're always not entirely sure what we're going to get. This explores so many different dynamics. The Hills at the Border, uh, a very folky track, um, you know, as opposed to like Rushing Water is kind of quintessential, um, but about connection, reconnection, forgiveness, acceptance, progression. It, it is a track that has stuck out to me and that I've had to go back and re-listen to several times. It might be the, the one for me on this album. For you, 
is there one particular track that that touches you more than others um i mean let's talk about the hills on the border you know it's, it's part of my musical dna it's folk music you know particularly folk music from my area it's a very strong traditional area between between scotland and england and mm-hmm. uh, the, the, those hills I'm talking about, the Cheviot Hills, where uh, a number of battles have been fought between the Scots and the English over the years. Um, thousands and thousands have died, hacking each other to death. The hills are full of ghosts and ghost stories. And so I wanted to bring that, that kind of mysterious, foggy, kind of misty, kind of, yeah, ghost story into, into the album, you know, and it's part of my heritage. Well, it's, it's very much, again, when I listen to this record, it's kind of like when you read a great book and the words start to lift themselves off a page, you really start to live that track. And, and again, that's why I said that that one kind of connected uh, me more to this record. And of course, the bridge in itself is, is a beautiful track. I love the line, uh, some will seek the higher ground, some of us the bridge. Again, going back to the last 20 months, it seems very definitive of where we are right now. Yeah, it's, it's a very useful metaphor for the whole record. You know, we're all seeking a bridge. It's, it's not made of iron or steel or, or stone. It's, it's, a, it's a metaphorical bridge, but nonetheless, it's one we need to find, all of us, the whole of society. And on speaking of the journey that we're all on, I would have wished you a, a happy birthday last month, but of course you were busy playing the Acropolis. How cool of an experience for a landmark birthday was that for you? Well, we were looking for a venue slightly older than me, and they thought we <laughs> to fit the bill. Uh, it's such a beautiful venue. You have to imagine that Aristophanes put plays on there two and a half thousand years ago. So you share the same dressing room as you know people like that. <laughs> I'm sure uh, that the green lo- the green room probably looked a little bit different back then. It it no, it actually doesn't. It's, it's much much the same as it was, but. You have that legacy. You're part of that tradition. It's a wonderful feeling. Mm-hmm. And of course, you're part of another amazing legacy, another cr- incredible uh, tradition with the, the residency in, in Las Vegas at the Coliseum at Caesar's Palace. So you go from the Acropolis to, to Caesar's Palace. I love it. You're, you're a noted historian. Um, <laughs> to, 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 to dive into that residency, and again, you've played Vegas a host of times before, but uh, somewhat of a more permanent fixture. Did you... Yeah, uh, Approach that differently? I was a little apprehensive. You know, I wasn't quite sure what the audience would be, whether I'm just going to get a bunch of tourists, you know, or, uh, with a complaise f- uh, sense. But uh, no, it was a real uh, audience that had traveled from all over the country to see that show. And they, they had a great time. They were determined to have a great time. And they presented a show that uh, slightly different from me, much more visual. Each song has its own visual world which we're creating with projections and state-of-the-art stuff and uh, it was a very exciting show for me a novelty for me and the audience was you know, blown away by it because they weren't expecting it surprises everything well and again as you say when you're rolling a tour across you know 53 cities in you know 61 nights it's it's very difficult to bring each song to life as you say and i think also too absence makes the heart grow fonder 17 months and you know you have to remember you were actually touring you know my songs when this all hit and kind of had to hit an abrupt stop so to be able to kind of regather and and take a breath and kind of explore what next with these songs that kind of had to been a little bit uplifting at a time where not many of us were being uplifted by things you know, every, everyone in the audience, the band, myself, the, my crew, all felt such a sense of relief. Oh, we're back home. We're back in our living rooms. We're back together listening to music and having a good time. We missed it. And uh, that, that was evident from the first moment. So more of the same, please. And, and you mentioned before a little bit that apprehension, the, the nerves in terms of not knowing what to expect. I know that you talked to Lionel Richie and Lady Gaga about their Vegas shows, their residencies, kind of give you a little bit more of a peek behind the curtain. Are there any other Vegas shows, residencies, artists, performers that have been there that you kind of say, okay, that's the benchmark. That's where I want to bring this show to. You know, I, I wanted to check out the competition. So I went to see Gaga. She was, she was fantastic. And, and Lionel, who's a, who's a friend of ours. I went to see David Copperfield too. Amazing show. And I saw a few uh, cabarets. Uh, Very nice. I just wanted to see what is out there, what people expect from a Vegas show. But I have to say, uh, our show is way up there. <laughs> 
That's incredible. And so you just wrap the the kind of the first leg, so to speak, and then it refires back up in uh, in in June. Uh, and in between that, uh, a cool little mini residency at, at the Palladium in, in London that's coming up this spring. In terms of taking this uh, to a global spectrum, uh, the one thing that I've noted is that we we haven't seen any Canadian dates, and I'm not sure if the, those are kind of in the works right now, or if it's because everybody's so pensive in, in plotting out tours. But you have such a love affair with with Canada and with this country. Of course, you did, um, you know, uh, the, the last ship, your production at the Princess of Wales in Toronto a few years ago. Um, plans at least being discussed upon when you'll be hitting uh, northern soil? There's no way I'm not going to play Canada, please. It's uh, hugely important to me. What I have to do this year before that is to is to honor the dates in Europe that were canceled last year. So I'm doing that first. And then we will do a North American tour. And of course, Brilliant. That's the country will be there, Canada. Well, at the very least, there are so many of us Canadians that are just itching to travel anywhere. And I think a trip to Las Vegas to see Sting, to see my songs would be the perfect excuse. And in the meantime, we can all pick up the bridge. Like I said, just an incredible work of art, Sting. Thank you so much for taking this time. Thank you, Jay. That's very nourishing to hear that. God bless. Bye-bye.